Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Intermediate. Welcome. Yes, welcome back, intermediate listeners. Lucky 13 here, class 13. And I'm going to start off the section today, the class, with uh, a question from David from Tarragona. David has asked about the difference between most and most of. And, David, I think the best way for us to discuss this is with example. With uh, a few examples here, but basically the, the difference is specific or general. We can say most people like chocolate. Most of the people in this room like chocolate. So when we get more specific, we're using the article, the. And when we do that, we're going to say most of the people. Okay, most of the people in this room like chocolate. We could also say most of the people in Spain have dark hair. Most of the people in Spain have dark hair. Most people like chocolate. Most people like going to the beach. Most of the people in Spain like tortilla. So we're getting specific. We're, quantif we're, we're, we're choosing a more specific group. So we say most of the people in what? In Spain, in the room, in this country, in the class. So we're being more specific and we have to say most of the people. When we're speaking generally, we simply use most. Most people want to learn English. It's true. Most people are willing... Well, most... I don't know. I don't think that most people are willing to make the effort necessary to learn English. Most people find it's too difficult. So please, make the effort and try to be one of those few who are willing to do what it takes to follow the course. Be careful. Work hard. That's the key, really, working hard. Just keep working hard. Keep studying, practicing, 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 speaking, speaking, speaking. And I promise you, you will improve. We're giving you all the materials right here, but it's up, it's up to you to take advantage of them and to use them, to use the materials and learn it. Okay, let's keep going. We looked at uh, numbers yesterday. We were talking about numbers with 16 and 60. So, I'm going to review this because, again, it's a question of the intonation, and it's very important. So, I'm going to dictate some numbers, and I'd like you to write them down. So, get a piece of paper out. Yeah, that's right. Get out a piece of paper. Do you have it ready? Do you have your paper there? And get ready to write this down. Okay, the first number is 360,116. 560,560. 116,716. 716,660. Okay, one more number, then we're going to check. 716,760. Okay, the first number. What was the first number? 360,360,116. That's right, 116, 116. Very good. And the second number? 560,516. Oh, I'm sorry, 560,560. 560,560. 560,560. Very good. And the third number? 116,716. 116,716. 16. Remember, 16. Da, da. The intonation on the second syllable. And the third number? Did you get it right? 716,660. Very good. 
Seven and the last number, seven hundred and sixteen thousand. Seven hundred and sixty. Seven one six, comma seven six zero. All right. I hope you got those all right. If we have time at the end of the show, maybe we'll come back and try a few more numbers. If we have time, we'll see. All right, now I'm going to review going to. I'm going to review it. Are you ready? Are you going to follow? Are you going to listen to what I'm saying? Going to plus infinitive. I am going to. I am going to explain this. I'm going to give you some examples. I am going to keep talking in English the whole time. Ask me, ask me if I'm going to go home after this show. Are you going to go home after this show? Are you going to, plus infinitive always, going to plus infinitive. Are you going to go home after this show? Yes, I'm going to go home after this show. So this is an important form of speaking in the future, right? We're talking about planned actions or stated intentions here with the future with going to. Because we also have the future with will. We use will in the future when we're talking about spontaneous things. Typically, spontaneous things. My phone rings. Ah, I'll get it. I'll answer it. Okay, I will. I will answer it. Or if I drop my pen, I'll get it. I'll pick it up. But when I talk about um, planned actions or stated intentions, like I say, then we use the future with going to. So ask me if I'm going to watch a movie this weekend. Are you going to watch a movie this weekend? Yes, I think I am. I think I'm going to watch a movie this weekend. Ask me if I'm going to cook dinner tonight. Are you going to cook dinner tonight? Yes, I am. Yes, I'm going to cook dinner tonight. Ask me if I'm going to talk to my brother tomorrow. Are you going to talk to your brother tomorrow? Yes, I am. I'm going to talk to my brother tomorrow. Ask me if I'm going to visit Canada for Christmas. Or I could say, if I'm going to go. Ask me if I'm going to go to Canada for Christmas. Are you going to go to Canada for Christmas? Yes, I am. I'm going to go to Canada for Christmas. Ask me if I'm going to eat a hamburger tomorrow. Hmm, I think I, I think I will. Well, ask me, ask me. Kyle, are you going to eat a hamburger tomorrow? Yes, I think I am. I think I am. I think I'm, I might. I'm not sure. But I think I'm going to eat a hamburger tomorrow. All right. Word of the day. All right, yes, it's time for the word of the day. Our word of the day today is slot machine. Slot machine. Do you know what that is? Do you know, do you know what a slot machine is? You say in Spanish, máquina tragaperras. A slot machine. When you go to the casino and you put your coins in the slot. So a hole that is not circular but rather uh, a long hole, an elongated hole, I could say, where you can put coins, in this case, is called a slot. A slot. Like, we, we have a mail slot. You can say S-L-O-T, a mail slot. Some people have in their door a slot, you typically horizontal, where you can open a little flap, a little covering, and put the mail through. The mail slot. It's a slot. But this is a slot where you can f put a coin through. So you call it in Spanish a máquina traga perras. <laughs> but in English, a slot machine. Yes. And the Brit in, in Britain, I believe they sometimes call this a fruit machine because, of course, when you play the slot machine, you put your coin in and you pull the lever, which was a recent word of vocabulary, palanca. You pull the lever, ching, ching. You get the the machine going around, and, well, yes, maybe you win, maybe you don't, but you'll see those little, 
you'll see those cherries and uh, apples and oranges. So you often see fruit and bells and thing, different things. So in Britain, they call it a fruit machine. But in North America, we call it a slot machine. We can call it, we can say, I'm going to play the slots, the slots, the slot machines. So if you go to Las Vegas, you can play the slot machines. And uh, I think they're probably the worst odds. I think you have the worst probability of winning because they're the easiest thing to play. So people will go and play them and play them and play them. And the house always makes money on the slot machines, right? The casino always profits on slot machines. Well, they profit on all the games, really. But slot machines are uh, probably the worst odds for the player. I think the worst odds, meaning the worst probability of making money. So my advice to you, don't play the slot machines. All right. Now let's talk about the verb to sell. To sell. Every day I sell. Yesterday I sold. Pronunciation. What? All right. Yes, I want you to pay special attention to the pronunciation here. Sell. Sell. Not shell. There's no no S-H, but sell. Sell, okay? Sell. And it's the same as the pronunciation of Thelda, which is C-E-L-L, like like in a prison. Okay, but today I sell, yesterday I sold. Sold. And I need to hear the D at the end. Sold. Okay? So be careful with the pronunciation. Today I sell, or, or every day I sell, yesterday I sold. Did you sell a horse yesterday? This question was in the student guide, and I usually don't use the same questions, but I like this question. Did you sell a horse yesterday? No, I didn't sell a horse yesterday. Okay, answer my questions here. Do you sell cars? Do you? Yes, I sell cars. Or no, I don't sell cars. Did you sell a house last year? Did you sell a house last year? No, I didn't sell a house last year. Ask me, ask me if I sold a book last week. Did you sell a book last week? Ask me if I always sell books. Do you always sell books? No, I don't. I don't always sell books. I sometimes sell. I've I've sold a few books. When I went to when I went to the uh, Feria del Libro, working with Vaughn Systems in the Feria del Libro, I sold a few books. Yes. Do stores in Spain sell snow shovels? Snow shovels. I'm from Canada. It's very it's very important in Canada to have a snow shovel, and I don't think they sell them in Spain because you don't have much snow here. Probably in Burgos. Probably if you go to El Corte Inglés in Burgos, I would imagine you can find a snow shovel. But in Canada, all stores, all big stores, sell snow shovels. So a special shovel for for moving snow. Because uh, we get a lot of snow and we have to clear our driveways, right? The, the driveways up to our houses. We have to, so, so we can drive our cars up close to the house. We have to clear that ourselves, usually. Um and I remember when I was young, always in the winter time, shoveling snow. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Even when I go home now at Christmas time, probably this Christmas, I will have to shovel snow again. Do they sell sunglasses in most stores in Spain? Yes, they do. Of course, they don't. They, they don't have to sell snow shovels, but they do have to sell sunglasses. It's nice to live in a country where you where your stores have to sell sunglasses and they don't have to sell snow shovels. You know what I mean? Do stores in Madrid sell peanut butter? Mantequilla de cacahuete. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Typical amongst uh, Americans, North Americans, because I'm Canadian and I, I enjoy peanut butter. And I do, I do have a store. I know a store in Madrid that sells it, but it's very expensive because it's not common here. It's a typical product that if you've had it all your life, you'll want it. Like me, I've had it all my life. When I was little, I grew up eating peanut butter on toast. And it's full of protein. It's also full of fat. There's a lot of fat in it. But um, I do enjoy it. 
I enjoy it a lot because I had it when I was young. But if you've never had it and you tasted it for the first time when you're 30 years old, you probably wouldn't like it. So there isn't a culture of consuming it. Therefore, stores in Spain don't typically sell the verb we're practicing. They don't typically sell peanut butter. Every day they sell. Yesterday they sold. There are some products that I like from Canada that are not sold here. Peanut butter is one of them. Vocabulary of the day. All right. Yes, it's time for the vocabulary of the day. Number one. Our first word today is en realidad. Actually. 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 I may look Spanish, but actually... I'm Canadian. Actually, en realidad, actually, I'm Canadian. It's don't 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 confuse this. Don't confuse actually with actualmente because actualmente means currently. Okay? Ahora like ahora mismo, like right now, currently. Annual. Now, oh, English is easy. Annual. But remember, there's a second N, A-N-N-U-A-L. De repente. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. Severo. Severe. 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 Queja. Queja. Complaint. Complaint. Very good. A complaint. We have the verb to complain and the noun complaint. En cuanto a mi respecta, Canada es un país muy, muy bonito. As far as I'm concerned, Canada is a very, very beautiful country. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, this is an important structure. As far as I'm concerned, it is a good idea for us to spend some time practicing it. Okay? As far as you're concerned, is Spain too hot in the summer? Yes. Answer me. Yes. As far as I'm concerned, Spain is too hot in the summer. As far as you're concerned, are Spaniards friendly? Yes. As far as I'm concerned, Spaniards are friendly. As far as you're concerned, are the teachers of Baugan Inglés 4.0 very good? Yes. As far as I'm concerned, the teachers of Baugan Inglés 4.0 are very good. As far as you're concerned, are they friendly? Yes. As far as I'm concerned, they're friendly. As far as you're concerned, is there too much traffic in Madrid? Yes. As far as I'm concerned, there's too much traffic in Madrid. As far as you're concerned, is Raúl getting too old? No. As far as I'm concerned, Raúl isn't get getting too old. Or, eh, maybe, as far as I'm concerned, maybe he is getting too old. I don't know. Your opinion about football? I don't know. We're out of time. Ladies and gentlemen, we are completely out of time. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, don't go to the casino to play the slot machines because the probability is not very good. Remember that. I'm going to leave you for now. We're going to go to commercials. We're going to come back with the advanced class. I'm Kyle Miller. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.